Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, um, 3D Modeling for Animation, Fall 2021. Um, anyway, uh, to continue where we left off last week, we built um, Reboot Mike's head using organic modeling. And what I want to do today is I'm going to continue with his upper body here, and I'll build his shoulders and his arms and his hands. So that will involve using um, some tools that we've already used and some we haven't. Um, but more importantly, um, the ones that we have used will be the bevel tool. The bevel is really, really important. We can also use scale, um, you know, size it. We can also use stretch. You'll notice um, that his upper arm is tapered. So I'll show you how to do that. You'll notice that his shoulder is beveled. So we'll go ahead and we'll show you how to do that. And the two parts that will be unique are that if you look at his forearm, you can see that there are little bulges in here. I wanna show you how to do that. Um, and in addition to that, we're gonna use organic modeling to create his hands, which look like little mittens. Okay, so let's start with the shoulders first and then build it across. So to do so, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the disc tool like so. And from the side view, you can build it from the top view, the back, it doesn't really matter <clears throat> where you start, but if you want the orientation of an object to be along a certain axis, for example, I want my, um, disc here to be along the x-axis, so I should start along the right or left quadrants here. So I'm going to click and drag like so, pull this out, make it nice and big. And I also want to make sure, um, you know what, I already goofed. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on a new layer and put this one in the background. So let me do that again. I'm going to go ahead and select the disc or I already did it. So let me go back because um, I need to get rid of that. So I'm gonna select the disc itself. Um, let's go ahead and select polygons. I goofed. Let's go ahead and select that. Um, let's look at this. Let me just undo, that will be easier. There we go. It's done to. So I'm going to go back here. That's Command Z, Control Z. Um, as I'm building this, I just need to remember that as I'm building additional parts, <clears throat> I put the parts that I've completed in the background in a background layer, and then I build the new parts on a new layer. So that's a new active layer. So let me go ahead and we'll start here in the disk tool again. I want to make sure that numeric requester is visible because I want this disk to be perfectly circular. Okay, nice big, big disk here. And um, 24 sides is adequate. I'm going to pull this out from the top view. So we give it a little bit of thickness like so. And then we're going to go ahead and move it out like so. And you'll see that um, one of the tools that we'll be using also today is the mirror tool so that I only have to build one side and then I'll mirror it and it will automatically go to the other side. So I can resize this a little bit if I want. Like so and that looks pretty good. Now let's check the radius here. Um, I have 84, I'm gonna make it 90 and 90 or 85 and 85. Let's make it um, 85 and 85 millimeters. Now the sizes that you will be using may be a little different and that's okay. The most important thing is that the proportions look accurate, you know, size relationships look good. So you can see that I've moved it off to the side here. And I need to pull this out and bevel it a little bit, but I'm gonna do that as soon as I get everything in place. 
and I complete the object by simply turning the tool off. And now what I want to do is I want to add geometry to this to be able to bevel this. So we're going to use the bevel tool. So to use the bevel tool, I make sure that I have at the bottom here, polygon mode selected. I also want to make sure that the action center is the center of the selection. And I'm going to click on that outside polygon here. And now what I can do is I can use the bevel tool. So remember B for bevel. B is, you know, bevel tool is your friend. It will, you will use it a lot. So I hit B for bevel. And you can click just one left click in any quadrant, and that's it. Okay. And I've added geometry to this. You don't see it yet, but you have. So now what I want to do is under the modify tab, I'm going to select size. And I'm going to click and drag it in a little bit. And you can see that I've added some geometry here, like so. And now I can go ahead and I can um, change the size and I can hit T for move. And then from the top view, I'll pull it out a little bit, like so. And now we've created our bevel. Maybe not so much, just a little bit. Like so. Okay, so you can see that little bevel that's sticking out there. I'm going to pull it out just a little bit more. That's good, just like that. Turn off T for move, deselect the polygon. And now, what I want to do um, is I want to create a I might move the whole thing out just a little bit. Let me zoom in here. Just move it just a little bit. There we go. So it's right inside and overlapping um, his head. And now what I want to do, um, remember if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. And you know what? I goofed here. Um, there's something wrong with this. This is offset incorrectly. So I'm going to undo a couple of steps here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I undid it. I'm going to hit T for move. And I'm going to pull it out. I want to make sure that it's centered. T for move. And pull it out. There we go. That looks good. Yeah, anytime you notice as you're building that things are off a little bit, then you need to fix them. And my centering was off a little bit, and I want to make sure that it's dead, dead in the middle. And that looks pretty good. So I'll turn off, move, deselect, and that looks much better. Yeah, little things, little tweaks. Again, proportions, placement, that sort of thing are all very important. So now what I can do is I already have a surface texture for our gold or our brass or whatever you want to call it. So with the, um, the shoulder selected, I'll hit Q. And I don't want it to be the default, but I do have one already selected and I named it gold. And I'll click and we've got it created. So now that this is done, I can go ahead and I can copy this and I can put it on the layer of um, the head since I'm all done with it. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit Command X. Uh, not yet, I'm not going to do it yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create another layer here. And I'm going to put these in the background. So I'll hold down the Shift key as I click the bottom half of these. OK. And now what I need to do for his little um, arm socket here is just nothing more than a sphere. <clears throat> so again, from the right view, I'm going to go ahead and under um, create, I'm going to select the, um, the ball tool. And I'm going to click and drag like so. And again, I want to make sure that it's a perfect sphere. So I want the x, y, and z axes coordinates to be all the same. And I can just overlap it like so. 
Okay. Notice that I've just inset it a little bit. I, if I want to be really picky about this, I can cut away these interior polys. But later on, if you decide that you want to animate it and move it around, it might be best to leave it intact. So I'm going to go ahead and let's make this 38 millimeters. So 38 millimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the tab key. And I'm going to do the same thing, 38 millimeters. Make sure that the X, Y, and Z are all the same. Make sure it's a perfect sphere. And that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the placement almost. I'm going to move this over just a little bit so that it's all centered up. And now I can go ahead and I can uh, turn off the ball tool. And we need to name this one Chrome because this is a brand new um, surface that we haven't used yet. So I'll hit Q and I want to name it Chrome because that will be a, a default Chrome surface that we will use. And I'm just going to leave it gray. Gray is just fine. Click OK and I'm good to go, but I have that surface. And if you don't know for sure, if you bring up the surface editor, you can see that these are all the surfaces that I've created so far. So we have the shoulder, we have this little, um, I don't know what you would call this, it's just the pivot allows the, his arm to pivot. And now we need to create his upper arm. So the upper arm is nothing more than a cylinder. So again, from the right view, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll select the disc tool. The disc is the cylinder. And I'm gonna to try to get the um, approximate proportions for this. Now I may be off a little bit. So with this one selected, you know what? I'm, as I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the size that we have here. And that looks pretty good, pretty good. I'm just looking at proportions here. So let's select the disk and click and drag like so. And I want the, I'll go ahead and I'll stretch this out a bit like so. I'll move it over like so. And again, overlap it just a little bit. And I'm going to zoom out just a little from here. And again, I, I already goofed. I want this to be on a brand new layer. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to then hold down. I'm going to click the bottom half, hold down the shift key and select the others so I can see everything in background. So let's do that again. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the right view and I'm going to click and drag, pull out the his upper arm and move it into position here. And I need to make sure again that the Y and Z coordinates are the same. So um, I'm going to use 15 millimeters, I think. 15 millimeters, 15 millimeters. And if it's not right, we will change the proportions. And I'll go ahead and I'll stretch this out. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and move it into position like so. And that looks about right. He has sort of a short upper arm here. And again, if I need to change the proportions of this, I can do that. Um, Let's move this over. So I'm just making a little adjustments here. There we go. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn it off. But as I said, you'll notice that it is tapered. So the way that you taper this is goes as follows. There's two different ways that we can do that. Under modify, we have a taper tool and we would want taper constrain. 
And if I move over again, we we're going to make sure under uh, the fall off, we're going to use a linear fall off. And if I look at the right view and I click and I drag, notice that it tapers. That's just how I want it. And I think his forearm looks pretty good. If everything needs to be resized a little bit to fit the size that we have in, uh, try to match the proportions of the picture that we have, we can do that. But I'm looking here to make sure that the portion, proportions that we're using look pretty accurate. And I think they're pretty close. Now, the other way I said that we could um, resize that is instead of using the taper tool, let's go ahead and turn off taper. Okay, and I can select the end polygon and I can use size and making sure that it's sized from the center of selection. Again, I can, it doesn't matter where I click and drag, I can taper it like so. By resizing that one polygon, it tapers it. So either way works, whatever works for you, it's just fine. Okay, so I'm done with the tapering that and now I got to put another joint here. So again, I'm going to zoom in from the right view. And I want the sphere to be a little bit bigger than his arm here. And before I do that, um, let's deselect the polygon. I'm going to hit T for move. And I'm moving this just a little bit to center it up. I mean, it looks centered before, but I'm being really very picky at the moment. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a brand new. <clears throat> Actually, this is, uh, I got to make sure that before I do that, I hit Q. I want this to be bold. I can click OK. OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a brand new layer. And I'm going to put all of the others in the background by holding down the Shift key and clicking the bottom half, like so. And the reason I'm not combining everything together yet is because I want to create the entire arm first, including his, his hand. Um, and then I will join them together and I will mirror it to the other side. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I have a brand new layer selected and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use under create. I'm going to use the ball and I'm going to click and drag like so. Just a little bit bigger. And we'll go ahead and make sure that it's all, all the same. So I have 10, let's make it 11 millimeters. Okay, zoom out a little bit, <clears throat> move it into position like so. Zoom in a little, again, to check the position of it. Move this down a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, doke. So I've got his um, the joint here positioned. I'm going to hit A to make sure that everything is resized. I could go ahead and I'll make this just a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 12 millimeters. There we go. So the joint's just a little bit bigger. And that looks about right. Um, again, I'm going to zoom in a tad. I'm just being very picky here as I'm moving this around. I'll move this over just a smidge. There we go. 
So I'll go ahead and I'll fix that. Hit Q, and we already have, this is another joint. So this is going to be um, the Chrome. <clears throat> and once again, I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new layer. And I'm gonna put these in the background by holding down the shift key and selecting the bottom halves of those layers so I can see what I'm doing here. Now, this is the toughest part. This is creating his forearm. And if you look at the forearm, you can see that there are little bulges like Popeye. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna go ahead and create the, the forearm. And again, we're gonna use the cylinder tool or the disc tool, whatever you wanna call it. And from here, I'll click and drag from the right view, like so. And click and drag and I'm gonna pull it out. And it's about the same length maybe a little bit longer as his, um, his upper arm. And I'm gonna move it down. And I'm trying to make sure that, let's move this here. You can see that it's a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna go back down to maybe um, with the numeric requester, I want to make sure that the radius is maybe 10 millimeters. Let's try 10. Whoops, I don't want meters, I want millimeters. There we go. Let's try this again down here. Let's try 10. No, even a little bit less. So I'm going to go down to maybe nine or even eight. That's looking pretty good. Make sure that it's centered up. Now there's, before I finish this, there's one more important thing that I need to do. And that is, in order to create those bulges, I need to add geometry. It's best if I do that while I'm building it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add segments. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a boatload of them right here with a numeric requester. And as I'm doing that, you can see that it's adding those segments, that geometry. Maybe 36 ought to do it. So I just have a bunch of it. In order to get it to bulge, um, again, I need that additional geometry. So um, I could have subdivided afterwards, but as I said, knowing in advance that I want it to bulge, <clears throat> I could go ahead and add those segments while I'm building it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll complete the disk tool. Now I'm ready to add the bulges. Now to do that, we can use, I'm gonna try, um, I was doing this the other day and I was having problems. I'm gonna try the size tool, but instead of using um, no fall off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a radial fall off. And I'm gonna go ahead and I can adjust how this pinches or how this forms. And I want it to be a nice kind of bulgy rounded fall off. So I'm gonna move this over a little bit like so from the top view and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then in order to create the fall off widget, we right click and drag like so. You can see a little orange bubble that surrounds our arm. Well, I also need to do that. And you can see from the perspective and you can see from the right view that it's not surrounding our object, I need to right click and drag in order to put it directly over. So that bubble surrounds our object here. And when it does, then I should be able to left click and drag now and see how it's not working. This is the same issue I was having the other day. So I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna change the factor to 100%. 
and see if that helps. And now I'll click and drag and that's still not working. So this is the problem I was having the other day. Um, there is a glitch right now with Lightwave that um, the size numeric requester isn't working here. So I'm gonna have to instead use um, stretch. So I'm gonna switch to stretch, but I'm gonna do the same thing. Under fall off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select radial and I'm gonna right click and drag. I'm gonna pull that out like so. Right click to move it. And right click and drag, pull that out. Right click and drag to move it. So what the bubble does is it controls the amount of um, stretching that occurs. More stretching will occur in the middle and less towards the outer edges. So now what I want to do from the right view is I want to left click and drag and you can see that it's bulging now. See how that bulges like that? So it's like, you know, you've kind of literally um, taken and created a little bubble aneurysm inside that. Thing. So I've got a little bubble here. I want to make sure that it's pretty rounded. And that looks pretty good. Now, this is what the size should have done automatically. So what I want to do now is I want to do the same for the, the, um, the, the, forearm, the other part of this forearm here. And I'm gonna make sure that this is a little bit smaller. So I'll right click, I'm right clicking as I move it. I right click um, for the bubble here, but I want it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna left click now and move the mouse forward, right, left click and move it to the right a little bit. And we just have a little bit smaller bulge here. There we go. So that is how we do that. So you'll notice that the fall offs um, work really nicely to take a primitive and to distort it and to um, conform it to how we want it to look into a very um, much more sophisticated, much more complex form. Okay. So that's what I've done for that. Let me zoom out here and see if I'm close to what theirs is. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm gonna undo that again. I'm gonna do the, the forearm again. So let's select stretch. And I want it to be, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna right click and stretch it out just a little bit. Want it to be like so, there we go. And now I'm gonna left click and pull it out, pull it out. And that looks much better. That looks a little bit better. And I'm trying to make sure that the radius is the same for each. Let's make sure in perspective, see how that looks. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm satisfied with that for the moment. So there's our stretch tool. <clears throat> I can turn it off and now I need to assign the um, surface to it. So I'll hit Q. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch from, make sure that I select gold. I've got that done. So now I've got pretty good chunk of, if I hit A, <clears throat> everything fits. I created the shoulder, I created again the joint, I created his upper arm, I created his, um, uh, his forearm. Now, if I need to make any of these a little bit smaller because they're on separate layers, I can do that. And I can see that the one here for his, um, 
his forearm looks a little bit too bulgy, but I mean, I can leave it that way. I can also go ahead and I can select <clears throat> the size or I can select stretch. And I, I can turn off the, um, the radial. I can select no fall off and select none. Now watch what happens. It will affect uniformly the entire arm. So if I right click and I drag, notice how it stretches it in a little bit. I'm making a little bit thinner here. And that looks a little bit better. So let's look at this from. No, not. Let's go back. Not quite so small. Let me try instead. This time I'm going to select size and I'm going to go back and switch to none. But when I size it, it's going to size the whole thing. But that's OK. If I do that, see how it makes it a little bit smaller? And now I can go ahead and I can hit H for stretch. And I want to stretch it out just a little bit, like so. Right click. And that looks a little bit better. OK, so it's a little bit his forearm. It's really kind of teeny tiny. So I've got that all set. I'll turn off stretch. So stretch size works nicely. The size for whatever isn't working properly on my computer when I select the radial fall off. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Um, although, nope, there's something wrong here. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, see, it's I'm not adhering to um, there we go. I want to make sure that it's nice and round. Okay, remove, move it up a little bit. That looks better. Okay. I can also move it in a little bit. So I'm zooming out a little bit. And proportions from the top look good. Proportions from the back look pretty good. Maybe I can hit, I have T for move. Move this in just a little bit. There we go. So I'm being, again, very nitpicky about the proportions. Um, making sure that things are, are perfectly cylindrical or round or whatever, and um, making sure that the relationship of one object to another um, looks about the same as what we have in our, um, our photograph here. Now, if I need to make changes, for example, if, let's go ahead and stretch it back out a little bit again. I can do that. I can hit H for stretch. And I can move it out just a little bit and up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So I'll turn off H for stretch. Zoom out a little bit and we're good to go. Now the last part that we're going to do today is to build the hand. Except for mirroring what we complete. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And it would might hard, be hard, difficult to do, discern from this as to what the hand is made from, but it's actually just a simple box. So I'm going to go back to the Create tab because we're using we're going to use organic modeling for this. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and select, again, a new layer. And I'm going to put these in the background. So I'm holding down the shift key as I'm clicking the bottom half of these. So I can see what, nope, nope. Uh, 
There we go. So let's go ahead and make the hand now. So to make the hand, <clears throat> I'm gonna use the box tool. From the back view, or actually from the top view, um, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag like so. I'm gonna pull this out. And just a little, little widget, little box here like so. And then from the back view, I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. So maybe I'll use the right view instead. Stretch this out just a little bit. Stretch this out a little bit. We can always change the proportions a little. So if I look and I zoom in here from the perspective view, we can just see it's a little tiny, tiny size. That's I'm starting from here and I'm just creating that. But again, in order to pull out his thumb and to pull out the mittens for his fingers, I need to do a couple of things. I need to add segments. So I just need two, whoops, two, two, and two. That's all you need. And if we look here, you can see that it's subdivided. Just as I subdivided and I added geometry for the forearm, <clears throat> I'm adding geometry for the um, for his hand now, but just a little. We don't need to add much. So now I can go ahead and I turn, can turn that off. I don't need any more for the box tool. And I can now begin to add um, in, in geometry for his thumb. So this is where his thumb is gonna be right here. So I'll select that polygon. To add geometry for that, I hit B for bevel, B and I click. Now it look, doesn't look like I've done anything, but now if I hit T for move, I can go ahead and move that and I've added that geometry and I can pull it out a little bit like so. So that's gonna be for his thumb. Okay. Now go ahead, and it's not rounded off at all, but we will get to that in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off T for move. I'm gonna deselect that polygon. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna use, instead of bevel for these two polygons, these are the mittens, I'm gonna use something called smooth shift. If I use the bevel tool, which you can do, it will keep those two units separate. So again, if I go to multiply and I select B for bevel, I just click and I hit T for move and I move it out. It's moving them both individually, but now watch what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn off T. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna hit T and move it. And notice how they are separate units. So it's kind of like, you know, doing that. I don't want that. I want these to behave as one unit. So I'm gonna go all the way back. And this time, instead of using bevel, I'm going to use um, smooth shift, which is right here. And now when I click on it and I hit T for move, when I pull that out, it looks the same. Okay, so I've got that moved out and I'm done moving it and I deselect. But now when I select an individual polygon, if I select this polygon here and I hit T for move, watch what happens. See how they're both con they're connected. That's the difference between bevel and smooth shift. And that's like most of the tools. The stretch allows you to change the, the proportions, the X, Y, and Z coordinates separately. Um, if you use size, it changes them all uniformly. So each of the tools, generally there's a couple of them that are a little bit different from one another. <clears throat> um, you know, they do similar things, but again, a little bit different. So the next question is, well, how do I get that from looking like, uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna select this polygon a little bit and I'm gonna move it out a little T for move. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit like so. And T for move and deselect. So now how do I get this to get all rounded off? 
Now you hit tab, and this is why you want it on its own layer. Notice how it, it softened everything and it made it look like his little mitten that you see here on the left. Now I can select individual points and if I want it a little bit wider or you know thicker, again, I can use H for stretch. On the top view, I can stretch this out a little bit. And I can hit T for move and I can move it over a little bit like so. And if I want, I can select the points from the front view. It's kind of hard to see them, but I can, because you can see that it's at a slight angle. So what I want to do now is I'm going to, let's see what do I have. I hope I don't have, I have move selected. So I'll turn that off. Um, I'm going to select points now instead of polys. And I want to select these points at the very end. So let me see if I can't do it from here since I'm having a hard time seeing them. And I wanna make sure that they are both selected. So I'll do it from the top view. Hold down the shift key. And let me select the other side over here. Hold down the shift key. No. There we go. So now they're both selected. Now I can hit T for move again. And I can pull it and stretch it out. And you can see that it's stretching like so. So it's looking a little bit more like theirs. If I want to move this out from the center, I'm going to go ahead and hit T for move and to stop it and deselect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this point again, these points. And I'm going to hit T for move and I'm going to pull it out again just a little bit. There we go. And I might give it a little bit more thickness. So I'll deselect the points. T for move, make sure that's turned off. Um, hit, um, what I want to do is to stretch it. So hey, H for stretch, make it a little bit fatter. So I'm stretching it out just a little bit. Hit T for move, moving it into position. And now I have my mitten here. And if it needs to be resized, you know, I can, you know, stretch it again. I can hit H for stretch. And from here, we can stretch it in a little bit. That looks a little bit better. T for move, move it into position. And that looks closer to the proportions that they have. So I have my mitten in place on my, his hand. Now what I need to do is make sure that I have move turned off. So that's T for move. Now I need to hit Q to color it. And I'll name, just name it red because that's the color that it's going to be. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the color wheel here. And let's select a nice deep red here. There we go. So now I'm ready to combine all the parts into one. From the shoulder, to his joints, to his upper arm, to his forearm, as well as his hand. Okay, so I'm going to go one by one, and I'm going to go all the way back to this layer here. Right after it, and I'm going to Go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to paste. Then I'm going to take go to this one where we have his upper arm. And I'm going to hit Command X or Control X. Go back to this layer and then hit Command or Control V for paste. So I'm doing that for each one of these to put them all on the same layer. One more to go. Okie doke. So let's put the other one in the background so we know where his head is. We're using it for placement. Okay. 
And I think if we zoom out a little bit, let's check our proportions here. I can do that. His arm and everything might be a little bit too long, right? So I can stretch that in, I can resize it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave it that way for the moment and I might go back and clean it up, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you now though, how to mirror this. But I would change the proportions a little bit to make them a little bit more compatible with what we see here. I can do all of it uniformly. I can stretch it. And um, there's a couple of ways of doing that. If I want, um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna switch back to poly mode, not that I have to. But if I want to stretch it from, let's say I want from this point to this point to be stretched in or pulled in a little bit, um, I might want to take each individual component and resize it. And maybe the head is a little bit too large too. So there's all those factors that I need to take into consideration. But I won't do that now because I am running out of time. So I do want to mirror this. So I have the arm and the shoulders and the hand and everything on another layer. So now what I can do is I can select mirror. I can go ahead and I can go to actions and I can reset and I can activate. And you'll notice that it automatically created another one. Now I can take the center orange part and I can pull it back a little bit to get it in place and it created a nice mirrored image. It didn't just flip it, it created an entire, you know, it went from a left hand to now a right hand. And when I'm happy with that, the placement of it and everything, I can turn mirror of it off. And now I'm ready to place this on my, um, the same layer is, is the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit Command X for cut. I'll select the head layer and I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command V for paste. And that looks pretty darn good. I think the whole thing needs to be resized a little bit so that it matches his, the one, the, the one that we see in, in the photograph. So if I hit Shift H, that should resize everything. And I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and resize it just a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. And it might be that his arms are still a little bit too long. So I might have to go back in one by one and adjust those. And then that will be it. So that's what I'm gonna do today when I sign off. I'll make some adjustments and make sure that the proportions are accurate, but that's all there is. That's what we're gonna cover today. Next um, Monday, um, oh, next Monday, I will not be here. So I will be here Wednesday. So just to let all of you know that um, I have some medical issues I have to deal with. Um, so I, um, take note on the weekly syllabus that um, our webinar will be canceled next Monday. Okay. And I will continue with this and we'll build the bottom part and his torso and his mouth and his legs and feet and that sort of thing. And then the last thing that we'll do is we'll send it all over to layout and we will <clears throat> um, surface it. And I'll show you how to create the eyes and that sort of thing and make the surfaces look very real. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I'm gonna sign off and say goodbye if there aren't any questions. Okie doke. So that's it for today. And um, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna pause the recording and say goodbye. You're, you guys are welcome to sign off. Bye-bye.